The Colorado Republican Party is calling on people to burn all gay pride flags and proclaiming in a mass email to supporters that, quote, God hates pride. The Republican Party's message attacks so-called godless groomers and echoes the anti-gay slur used by the Westboro Baptist Church. You heard that right. The Colorado Republican Party is kicking off Pride with a bang this year. That email was sent out by the chairman of the Colorado Republican Party, Dave Williams, and that email also includes a hate video from Pastor Mark Driscoll, as well as a trigger warning, which reads, Warning, don't watch if you are easily triggered or intolerant of the gospel of Jesus Christ, like Kyle Clark from Nine News. Now, for those who don't know, Kyle Clark is the journalist from that news clip that we just saw. So apparently they specifically don't like him. But in addition to that email, the Colorado Republican Party tweeted, burn all the pride flags this June in response to backlash over the email that they sent. They are owning homosexuality so bad right now, and I don't think that the gays can recover from this. But, you know, to be fair, that email or tweet isn't necessarily surprising considering the fact that the state's GOP chair has a history of pretty blatant homophobia. In fact, he was one of four Republicans who tried to ban gay marriage in 2020, which, you know, I guess makes sense because that was a pretty slow year with not much else going on, so they probably thought it was a good time to stick it to the homos. Now, Dave Williams, the GOP leader in Colorado, is probably hyper-focused on this issue for a number of reasons, one of them being repressed homosexuality, I'll just say it because we're all thinking it. And another is probably the fact that Colorado made history back in 2019 by electing its first openly gay governor. So Republicans have been coping and seething about that ever since. But believe it or not, this email has led to a lot of backlash, even though this has kind of been what they've been doing, even among Republicans. But I guess they've just had enough and they're like, Enough is enough. CBS News reports, quote, more than 100 Republican leaders across Colorado have signed a petition aimed at removing their state party chairman from his position. Within three days, Nancy Pelosi, this is the chair of the Jefferson County Republican Party and also probably Nancy Pelosi's Wario, says she was able to get more than enough signatures to force a vote by GOP's 400 member central committee. It will take 60 percent of them to unseat Williams. It isn't the first time Williams has come under fire, but for many Republicans, it was the last Draw. So he might actually get ousted because of this. But to be fair, Republicans have been really irritated with him for a while, and they've been looking for a reason to get rid of him. CBS Colorado also reports that he has consistently attacked fellow Republicans. He's very Trumpian. He's waded into GOP primaries in violation of his party's own rules, and he's used state funds for his congressional campaign. So there's a lot of reasons why they want to get rid of him. But when it comes to that petition Republicans are signing to oust him, he is already threatening any Republican who signs it. Williams, who has a reputation for going scorched earth on those who cross him says he will publicize the names of those who sign the petition and notify the national party of their quote support for pride month oh shit he's gonna talk to the manager if you try to oust him so you wouldn't want that would you you better not do it i just i'm wondering what exactly they're supposed to do with that information i guess the implication is that if he tells the national gop about it then maybe they're gonna look gay since they're trying to oust him for supporting pride. I mean, I don't I don't really know what he expects there uh, to accomplish, but my brother in Christ, your constant fixation about gay people has made you more suspicious than anyone else in the entire GOP. You tell me that they support pride, I don't bat an eye, but you focus on this for years. I mean, I'm gonna think you're suspicious. I'm sorry that you're personally unable to come to terms with your own sexuality, but you shouldn't make that internal struggle that you're experiencing everybody else's problem. Like, I don't know, go to therapy, do something. But by now, that's kind of where we're at. You have this psychopath in charge of the Republican Party in Colorado, not necessarily much more psychopathic than the last leader, I'm assuming, but still psychopathic nonetheless, because this party has been insane for quite some time. But, you know, you kind of get the sense that the Colorado Republican Party has transformed under his leadership, at least, into the diet Westboro Baptist Church, if you will. But, you know, for some reason, gay Republicans in the state are acting like they're shocked over this, specifically congressional candidate Valdemar Archuleta, who is the chair of the Log Cabin Republicans. For those who don't know, that's the gay wing of the Republican Party, who released the following statement after his party sent out that homophobic email. Yesterday, the Colorado State GOP sent out an email with the subject line, God hates pride. 
I have been an avid critic of where the celebration of pride has gone in recent years and firm supporter of protecting children from environments and entertainments that are of an adult nature. However, this email went too far and was just hateful. I personally found it very troubling. I spoke with many LGBT and non-LGBT Republicans yesterday who also found the message in the email disgusting and offensive. This email does not represent Republican voters of Colorado. However, the Republican Party, like all political parties, is not perfect. And I believe it's important to have the integrity to call out your party when you see them make a mistake. On Sunday, June 2nd, the state GOP released its full list of endorsements for this month's state primary. After giving it a lot of thought, reflecting on the email released yesterday, I cannot accept the endorsement of the Colorado State GOP. I sent them an email asking to be removed from their list of endorsees. Now, he goes on to say that he's still planning to work with Republicans and support GOP candidates across the board. And he concludes that video by quoting Peter Thiel, who's a gay billionaire that donates to Republican politicians and funds right wing projects, which I think is kind of a nice cherry on top of that shit Sunday of a video. But I'll be fair and say that I do commend him for rejecting their endorsement and calling out the party's homophobia. But still, I've got to ask the question, how are you that surprised by this email? The chair of the Colorado Republican Party, your party, just tried to ban gay marriage in 2020. I mean, would you honestly feel comfortable as a candidate appearing in an ad with your husband? Come on. This party and the Colorado GOP in particular has made discrimination specifically against queer people one of their main priorities over the last couple of years. But this email is somehow shocking to you. It's some massive deviation from their normal behavior. I just don't understand why you're so shocked by this. Now, I'm gonna tell you all why I think he's shocked in a moment, but what I find interesting is that as he rejects their endorsement and joins calls for the state GOP chair to resign, he's still defending them, defending them from accusations of homophobia. I'm not joking about this. I do not think Dave hates me because I'm gay. I don't think that Dave is a homophobic person. Um, what he said that email was, but he as a person I don't believe is. Do you think he's pretending to be a homophobe? He's trying to get a reaction. Okay, so if he's not really homophobic and you know he's just trying to get a reaction, then why'd you make such a big deal about this? You literally rejected your own party's endorsement and called for his resignation, so you clearly think that it's important. So if that's the case, why defend him from accusations of homophobia when he's very clearly homophobic? It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I do love that the reporter was almost struck by the naivete of this Republican. And he asked, well, do you think he's pretending to be a homophobe? No, just pretending to be straight, actually. But I don't care if you are externalizing your internal struggle or you're just plain hateful and straight. Homophobia is wrong, period. And the fact that this log cabin Republican won't even admit that this guy is a homophobe after condemning him, mind you. It kind of shows you how unserious the log cabin Republicans are. But he's not just running cover for the party's leader who sent out that homophobic email and continues to bash gay people on the regular. He's still claiming that the party itself is not anti-gay. Is there any level of anti-gay bigotry from the Colorado GOP that would cause you to leave the party? Yes. If, if it did get to the point where I felt like this was something that was widespread throughout the community of Republicans, I would leave. You don't think that most Colorado Republicans are anti-gay? No. Amazing. So the party doesn't hate LGBTQ plus people. You know, there's just one bad apple who's also not homophobic, by the way. And really, his leadership is the issue here, but he's not homophobic, even though it's an issue. Okay, here's the problem with that line of thinking. Dave Williams has only been the chair of the Republican Party in Colorado since 2023, last year. And the party has a long, long history of being anti-LGBTQ+. In 2018, they literally defunded their state civil rights division. And in 2022, Colorado Public Radio cited anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric and policies from politicians as part of the reason why there's an escalation in anti-queer violence in the state of Colorado. Despite that, this guy does mental gymnastics to not only pretend like the party and its homophobic chair aren't actually homophobic, but feign shock when the party that's made it very clear that they're homophobic says something homophobic. I just don't know what he expected. Like, what exactly is the expectation here? They're very clear. We don't like gay people. But yet, when they say we hate gay people, you're like, oh my God, 
you have a surprised Pikachu face. I just don't get it. Like, do you know that viral photo of the chicken walking to a KFC? That's you going into the Colorado Republican Party headquarters. But the reason why he's so taken aback by this level of vitriol towards queer people is because Mr. Archuleta thought that he would be able to specifically ingratiate himself with the Republican Party by validating their homophobic beliefs. And I say this because, as LGBTQ Nation reports, Archuleta himself, though, has a history of anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric. He previously blamed LGBTQ plus individuals for the Club Q shooting and said that queer people are groomers or child sex abusers, a negative stereotype that has been used to justify hatred and discrimination. Quote, if you're really upset about being called a groomer, maybe you should step back and reevaluate your activity around children, Archuleta wrote on Facebook just a week after the mass shooting, at the very least for appearances sake. Quote, the biggest threat to increasing violence towards the LGBT community are LGBT activists and organizations who make LGBT people look insane unreasonable and menacing he wrote several weeks later we will face more hate in the future directly due to these activists and organizations now after these comments were made the colorado times recorder reached out to him for comment because of course what he said here as a gay man sparked backlash and he responded by saying quote i'm very aware of the history of gay men unjustly being linked to pedophiles as a group said archuleta and yes i know this has been used to justify hatred towards the lgbt community this is exactly why i feel this new fad of including children in LGBT activities with sexual themes is so dangerous. Not only is the sexualizing of children damaging to kids, it gives fuel to the rumors linking gay men to pedophilia. I also have never said that LGBT people are pedophiles, nor do I believe that. Right, but the problem is that when they say queer people are sexualizing children, they simply mean just being in the presence of a kid. That's tantamount to grooming. So if you're holding hands with your partner or you happen to mention your same-sex partner, they'll say that you're a groomer. I know that you know this, but you're still saying it anyway because you're trying to run cover for their homophobic smears. Now, I should also add that like most gay conservatives, he also hates trans people because of course, he liked a Facebook post that said LGB without the T because the logic is if you push trans people under a bus, then maybe, just maybe, you might be able to save yourself and other gay people from the wrath of Republican politicians. You know, if you offer trans people up as a sacrificial lamb, maybe the GOP politicians will spare you. But he's finding out the hard way now that it doesn't quite work like that. And he's shocked because he used his gayness to push tropes that are harmful about queer people, which he said he knows are harmful. But yet they still think that all gay people are bad, even the good ones like him. But rather than learning a lesson from this, he's still trying to ingratiate himself with homophobic Republicans. And I say this because on June 8th, he retweeted libs of TikTok who shared a photo of pole dancers at a Pride event in Colorado where kids were apparently present. Now, first of all, pole dancing isn't just erotic. It depends on the context. Second of all, there's maybe one kid there with their parent. But Valdemar responded saying, quote, this is not OK. We wonder why people like Dave Williams say the stupid things they say. It's because of situations like this. The the LGBT community needs to do better. This is not who we are. Hashtag protect children. Hey, dumbass, you don't have to justify and make excuses for a homophobe that you've already denounced. And Libs of TikTok is insinuating here that those pride pole dancers at Pride are grooming children. But ask yourself this. Did Jennifer Lopez groom children in 2020 when she included a pole dancing bit in her performance at the Super Bowl? Did she groom millions of children who saw that performance? Or did she ungroom the children that were already groomed by LGBTQ plus people? Is that how it works? Of course not, because straight people can't groom kids. Only gay and trans people can. So he has repeatedly done this. He's used his identity to reinforce defamatory smears against queer people, yet he can't believe that Republicans are so hateful. But why? You told them that their negative assumptions about queer people are all correct. So of course they're going to think that. They're not going to assume that you're the exception just because you're a Republican. Of course, they also think that you're a pervert and they also think that you're a groomer and a danger to children. You know, when they say they hate pride, they're not saying, oh, we hate pride, except whenever Mr. Archuleta has pride. They're saying they hate you too, dumbass. But, you know, after being used as a tool, I guess he thought that they'd make an exception for him. But again, it just doesn't work that way. He's not the first gay to find out that, uh, you know, this is the case and he won't be the last. But they're throwing you into the blender with all the rest of the LGBTQ plus people that you slandered, buddy. 
Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. 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 Pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Pride.